Hello and welcome beginners. Uh, today I will be showing you um, how to play Banished. So you just picked up the game, uh, you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, uh, let me tell you right here, it's actually a pretty fun game. Uh, I am doing a series on it for YouTube, not just for YouTube, but I just really enjoy playing the game. So anyways, uh, once you see this screen, obviously, you're going to start a new world. Uh, you could pick a random uh, name for your uh, your world, or you could type one in. For this case, I'll just type in tutorial, and then the map seed. If you know about Minecraft and how it has seeds, the map seed will uh, change the, uh, the, the layout of the land and the, where the rivers are and everything. So there's an infinite possibilities here, but um, I'll just go with the random one by pressing the uh, paper button over here. Now here's my recommendations. I would go with, uh, to start with, valleys, small, uh, well, the train type valleys, train size, small, climate, mild, disasters, off, starting conditions, medium. The train type uh, is uh, valleys or mountains. Uh, you can only build on flat land, and mountains uh, limit your amount of flat land you can have. So it, it makes it really difficult. Um, train size. I mean, you could do any size you want, but you know, I like I don't like making huge builds, or at least not usually. So you know, I I don't like to make my computer lag. So I just go with as much as I need. Anyway, climate. Uh, and the small is pretty big too, just so you know. Anyway, climate is mild. Um, it will like, it'll uh, like uh, I'm trying to describe this, but um, it'll change up the rain patterns and uh, the winter patterns and all of that, which kind of uh, limits their your your citizens' production. So you know, it's just mild. It's all, it's all good. Disasters, you can have this on if you want, but it can get pretty annoying when you have all this builds and then all of a sudden something gets destroyed. So I just keep that off. Uh, starting conditions, medium. You could go with easy if you want, but I just find that it gives you way too much. Like it starts, you basically start off with a village. So, uh, medium. Uh, let me read the description of that. How can I? Can I read it? Okay, yeah. A medium game begins with five families. Clothing, food, firewood, tools, and some construction materials are provided. A storage barn has already been built, and some seeds for fields and orchards. Is it orchards or orchids? Probably orchids, I don't know. Don't hate me. Uh, are available. Now, if you start off uh, with easy, uh, you begin with six families, a large amount of clothing, food, firewood, building materials, and tools are provided. And it already starts off with homes and storage areas. So, you know, I just like to uh, design my own world. So, uh, medium is good. It just starts off with one building. So, it's all good. Um, anyway, when you're all done, just press OK. And you will load into your world. Keep in mind, I'm going to try to go fairly fast because... Um, I don't want to uh, spend a whole lot of time doing this, or, uh, you know, I, I want to try to make this a short video. Um, look at that, we spawned right next to the river, which is good, and I'll uh, explain why uh, just right now. Uh, you could set up a uh, trading post along the river, and every few years or so, uh, a merchant will come by the, down the river, uh, and you can trade items with them. It can get pretty complicated, but that's alright. Anyway, we start off with a little bit of materials and a barn. Um, I recommend, real quick, uh, pressing the uh, gear button down here in the bottom right. And uh, selecting out which tabs you want on uh, your screen. By this, I mean uh, general statistics. This is really important. You always want to have this up so you know how much stuff you have. Uh, because all of this gets really important. And by the way, I pause the game by pressing spacebar, just so uh, they don't go on and starve. Anyway, um, 
also the assigning jobs to citizens one. Uh, this is also extremely important. You don't have to have this all, all the time, but uh, I like to have it out because I can just quickly assign jobs. I can, ha I can have like seven builders and... Um, well, real quick, I'll explain this. Um, every citizen is a worker, no matter what, except unless they're a kid. And uh, they will always be a laborer unless you assign them to a certain job. But if they don't have anything to do left in their job, like if they're a, a builder and they don't have anything left to build, they will automatically uh, start working as a laborer. It won't uh, visually show that they're a laborer, but they'll start doing a laborer's job. Um, also, all the symbols above their heads, uh, it's a house, that means they are homeless. But we shouldn't have to worry about that until winter, which as you can tell, it's early spring, year one. Whew, my mouth is hurting. Um, also, uh, this button right here, the event log. This is also really important. Uh, it'll tell you uh, whether you have low food, or it'll give you a reminder. Uh, it just gives you reminders or pop-ups of what's happening. Anyway, uh, I'll assign five builders, split it half-half. And what the laborers will do uh, is uh, cut down trees and harvest rock and all that that you assign them to do. And also, if you uh, create a building, the laborers will bring the resources from the stockpiles right here um, to the building area. And then the builders will build, obviously. So, um, real quick, this is what I like to do. I like to have it nice and organized, so I'm going to build a road, which the builders should do. I like to make it double layered, you don't have to do that, but I just think it's more organized. Anyway, I'll let them do that. Here they go. Uh, real quick, up here, uh, top left, in the, uh, the general statistics. Right here, it shows the number of adults, students, and children. We don't have a school, so there's going to be no students um but after a child uh turns 10 they will become an adult a laborer or if you had a school after they turn 10 they will become a student and then another 10 years they will become an adult um so we have 10 adults and eight children and uh for this tutorial i'll show you how to survive the first winter which is always extremely important we started off with a lot of resources, so we shouldn't have to worry too much. But we do not have a uh, constant income of food, which we do need. So, um, I think the best way to do that to start off with is go out into the middle of a foresty area, because it needs to be in a foresty area. Click on the apple button, and then click on the gatherer's hut in the far right. And uh, you can press R to flip it around the way you want. I'll just put it right here, and you can see the circle of uh, where they will gather. So that is about perfect. I'll place it right there. And they will start working on that. There they go. Um, I will speed up time. And as you can see, laborers are doing their job because if I click on them oh builders are going over there too that's all right oh yeah that's right builders will uh, remove the resources first and then laborers will come and do their job I think see you can see them all piling up They don't really need a house unless it's winter time, so uh, they should be fine. But if you want to grow your population, you need more and more houses. But just don't overdo it because each house needs an amount of food and firewood. Meaning, um, don't overdo your houses, otherwise uh, it can overwhelm your amount of work on your citizens. See, it's already getting built. Look at that. Now it just uh, needs to be built by the builders. Uh, 
Alright, I paused the game again. So we have the gatherer's hut built, and up here at the top, it'll say 0 out of 4, meaning this place will be able to hold 4 workers. Uh, and we have 5 laborers to spare, meaning that if we press this button right here, or down here in the bottom left, we could just quickly assign them to their jobs. Oh, four. Uh, split this even between builders and laborers. Now we have four gatherers uh, giving us food. Okay. Uh, I'm going to slow down time. Don't worry about farms quite yet, because you don't really need them until you have a bigger population. Okay. Uh, now, um, I guess it's only spring, so, let's see, next move should be a constant income of resources, but for now, we could just have our laborers, I'm gonna make them all laborers, because we don't need the builders right now, uh, they can collect, oops, wrong thing, they can go over here to the, uh, removal and destruction tools, uh, I'll click on the tree, and they'll harvest the trees that I select. So all those trees in our area right here will be gone. Alright, right, right there. Uh, in the event log, it says, late spring 1. DeMarco has become an adult and is working as a laborer. That is an example of an uh, event. If it's a more important event, then uh, it'll make a notification sound. Just to let you know. Okay. Now let's have them harvest this rock. Right there. And uh, this, this jaggedy... Uh, dark grayish looking rock is actually iron um we really don't need resources right now i mean i guess we can have a little bit more um let's have them grab this rock all this rock i'll worry about the iron later okay so now, let's go out into the middle of the forest again, and let's build something very important, a forester lodge. What the forester will do is uh, harvest trees and replant them, so that way we uh, don't run out of our income of trees, or wood, which we also need for firewood, which is very important. We have another liberator. Once we have a school, though, uh, they will start working as educated laborers, meaning they will be more efficient at their jobs. But for now, this is alright. Okay. Okay, look at that. Forester Lodge built. Um, they will also be able to hold four, uh, workers each, so I will do that. So now we should have a constant income of logs. Uh, real quick, let's see, I'm gonna build another stockpile, you can do that by coming to the storage, markets, and trade, and the stockpile right there. Let's see, how big is this one? It's a 4x6, so let's build another 4x6, like that, and now they can pile up resources over here too. Okay, doing good. Um, they will actually walk faster if they are on a road, so let's, uh, dang it, I, I always close out of this on accident, unless it just does it by itself, and I don't realize it. Anyways, let's build a road 
Let's hope this connects properly. Ah, it's one off. Oh, never mind. I think we got that perfect. Let's see. Yep, like that. All right, double layered. They will begin working on that. Okay, I'm gonna pause the game real quick. Um, we also, real quick, uh, need a wood cutter. But for now, I am going to uh, worry about homes because before you know it, winter's just gonna come out of nowhere and all your people are gonna freeze to death. So I think uh, to start off with, what we can do is uh, build a boarding house, which is basically a homeless shelter for your town. So if we go to uh, homes and housing, and the one on the right, the boarding house, it's a pretty big building. It can hold a lot of people. You just put it right there. I'm gonna stretch out these roads a little bit. All right, I'm gonna pause the game real quick too. Um, if you click on the uh, the gear and press the up arrow without the line above it, uh, you can double tap on a build, and that will raise the priority of the build, so they will work on that before anything else. Okay. Keep in mind I have it on uh, 10 times speed, so they're going a lot faster than what they normally would. Okay, boarding house. The whole town is living there. Uh, we have 18 people currently in total. And so this is good. So now, another very important thing that we're going to need uh, is a woodcutter. And they will produce firewood for us by taking our logs and turning them into... Uh, firewood, which is a very important reason why we needed the forester, because we need a constant income of logs, because we need a constant income of firewood. Uh, we had 200 firewood, but now we have 150. It's because uh, I didn't just use it all like that, but the house actually uh, should have taken it in storages. Yeah, see. Now we have a. They took more, but it's alright. Alright, it's autumn, so that means next season is winter. Uh, they will work less productively in winter, but it's alright, because that just means they'll survive. They'll work less productively, because they will go back to the house occasionally. And look at that, we have another laborer. Uh, and so, what we can do is uh, turn them into a woodcutter. You can have a total of one woodcutter per building. Alright, so now we have a woodcutter. And our people should survive by now. It's pretty easy to survive the first winter. You just have to have a house up and make sure you have firewood. If you start off in medium mode, I don't even think you need a wood cutter the first winter, but you're going to need it soon because you start off with a bunch of firewood. There you go. He has already produced a bunch of firewood for us. What that symbol means right there is uh, he has produced the max amount of firewood he could produce for now. We could raise that, but um, that's okay because we don't need it. We only raise it when we need it. Uh, gatherer's hut is grabbing us food. Okay. Good, good. Look at that. Two more kids were born. Uh, another two kids were born. Alright, 
let's uh, build a road from over here. Right there. Okay, so they will work on that. Look at that, we've survived the first winter. Uh, I said let's do it until we survive the first winter, but that was really fast. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna uh, make it so it's a self sustaining village, which really all you need after that is uh, tools and tailors, which is actually pretty easy. Um, all you have to do is. Um, over here, that's right, resource production. Uh, you're gonna need a blacksmith. Did I close out of those again? Or does it do that by itself? I never know this. Like, what happens here? It's a conspiracy. Okay, um, let's just set up a blacksmith real quick. Just right there, because we need tools. If they don't have tools, then they won't work productive at all. They'll work, but not not anywhere near what you need them to be working at. So, uh, let's have them work on that real quick. Okay. Pretty close, pretty close. And Taylor. Um, let's build him right there. Um... All right, we can hire a blacksmith. Both the uh, tailor and the blacksmith uh, work alone. Oh, we don't have enough iron for this. Do we have enough stone? Uh, we do not, so that means we need to get more iron and stone. We can go to the destruction tools, uh, collect this iron, and let's find some stone for them to collect. Uh, just kind of scroll over the surface of the forest and find some stone. Okay. It says that the stone and iron is low. You don't really need to worry about that. Um, you do need iron for the blacksmith. But that's alright. Bill. And guys, I am trying to make this as fast as possible. Anyways, Taylor has been built. Uh, we need a one Taylor. All right. Uh, now we have someone making coats for us, which is the Taylor, and someone making tools for us. I just realized something. <laughs> um, the Taylor needs uh, leather to make coats. Uh, which is actually another pretty e easy thing to get. So I'm just going to come out to this uh, forester lodge and build what we need. Uh, the hunting cabin. This will provide us with the venison, the meat, which is really good for our citizens, and also leather from the deer to make our coats. Uh, also, we need a bunch of iron for our blacksmith, so the, to do this for now, uh, just like hover over the forest and grab some iron, see what you can find. It's going to be kind of hard to see. There's some right there. There's some right there. Not too much iron on this island. There's probably a lot over there. Like, see, there's a bunch over here. Alright, this guy's made max tools, which is really good. Alright, uh, hunting cabin built, uh, it can hold three hunters, so I'll sacrifice all my builders to laborers, and half of them will become hunters, meaning we will get leather to make coats, 
for the winter. Uh, let's wait uh, a little tiny bit to see. Uh, that symbol right there it means they don't have the resources to make uh, or to do their job. Uh, that means we don't have leather, uh, which is fine. We will get plenty of leather soon. They'll do their job. Waddle over here, bring the leather to the barn. Um, oh, there you go. Symbol went away, meaning uh, we have leather and we're producing coats. Anyways, guys, uh, that's how you make a self-sustaining village and banished to start off with. Uh, if you want to see the tutorial on how to continue this, I will do that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. Um, anyways, I'll see you in the next video, and that guy has a symbol again. That's alright, the, the hunters will bring more leather. Anyways, see you in the next video, guys. Peace!